this is probably one of the most important videos of this series because it focuses on psychological abuse, which is probably the most common uh, form of intimate partner violence. Uh, it is often something that is completely invisible uh, that you would not be able to spot unless you had a trained eye. So what is psychological violence? What does that actually mean? Well, it's usually verbal in nature. Um, it may start off with an insult here and there. Um, and these insults can build up and build up and continue over time and eventually start eroding the self-esteem of the victim. Um, as you can see in our picture here, it may involve uh, a lot of really awful insults that are thrown at the victim. Um, and often the perpetrator will try to make the victim feel that they are unlovable or would not succeed in a relationship with anyone else. That's just one way of keeping them in the relationship and um, controlling them. What often happens also is that the perpetrator can succeed in making the victim think that the abuse is their own fault and that they are deserving of the abuse. Um, there can be a lot of accusations that are untrue or false. Um, there can be a lot of verbal threats and intimidation. Uh, and there is one strategy which um, not many people necessarily know about, which is called gaslighting, which is to slowly, slowly make someone think that they are losing their mind or that they are crazy. So an obvious example would be where the perpetrator is having an affair with someone else and the victim has seen all the signs, there's clear proof, but the perpetrator keeps denying and denying and making the victim think it's all in the victim's head. Um, there are some quite extreme examples of this where people can deliberately move things around the house or switch a light on when the victim thought the light was off or really plant things to make the victim think that they are losing their mind because that undermines their sense of self and their sense of what they know to be true about the world, which also extends to what they know to be true about their relationship. Um, so it's all about, all of these tactics are all about controlling the victim and making the victim bend to what the perpetrator wants, what the perpetrator wants them to wear, what the perpetrator wants them to do, who the perpetrator wants them to see, basically everything about the victim's life comes under the control of the perpetrator. And that leads us on to um, another very important concept. The type of control that we see in situations of intimate partner violence has a specific name, and that name is coercive control. And that is uh, a systematic pattern of behavior that is used over time by the perpetrator to control the victim. And it often happens incrementally and slowly, and it may not be noticeable at first, but over time, um, they will reach a point where the perpetrator is in control of many, if not all, the aspects of a victim's life, making it very difficult for the victim to escape if they want to escape, um, and making it very unpleasant and incredibly psychologically damaging to stay um, in that situation. So victims are in the situation of being profoundly controlled. They are often profoundly unhappy, but they are also so controlled uh, by the partner that they cannot see any other way through other than to stay in the relationship. And we will have a separate video on why victims of abuse do not always leave their partners. But for now, Psychological abuse, very common, um, and uh, it leads very much into coercive control, which is a huge, big underpinning feature of intimate partner violence.